missiles and rockets are always very spectacular to watch. Huh? But as an A-level student, you should be wondering, how can we calculate the continuous thrust generated by the rocket? Here you see water cannons being used to knock down demonstrators. Very exciting. Huh? Again, as an A-level student, you should be wondering, how can we calculate the impact force produced by a jet of water? Let's start with the rocket thrust. So suppose we have a rocket which is ejecting 300 kilograms of rocket propellant every second. So the rocket propellant is being ejected downward at a speed of 2000 meter per second relative to the rocket. Before the rocket propellants were being ejected, they were of course at rest, yeah? Zero meter per second. So when they are ejected, that represents a gain in momentum. And a gain in momentum requires a force. Newton's second law, right? So to calculate the force that a rocket is exerting to eject the rocket propellant, we need to do Newton's second law. So every kilogram of rocket propellant uh, gains a speed of 2000 meter per second. And in every one second, there are 300 kilogram of them. So if I take 300, multiply with 2000, the number I get is a force. You can check the units, huh? kilogram, meter per second, and then divide by another second. This corresponds to Newton. So again, units are very useful in physics. Huh? Just by looking at the units, actually you know what to do with the numbers if you're trying to calculate a force. So technically, 600 kilonewtons is the force that's exerted by the rocket on the rocket propellant. So the upward thrust force that the rocket receives is of course the action-reaction pair, so it's also 600 kilonewtons. Now there are a lot of books which uh, show the calculation this way, so they are actually using the V dm dt formula, which can be kind of derived huh, if you do the differentiation and you assume that V is constant. Uh, and M is changing. I have nothing against using this formula, but just be careful. When you see V, you should be thinking of delta V actually. It's the change in velocity experienced by the rocket propellant. And we use, when you see the M dt, it's actually how much mass is being ejected per unit time. All right? It's not really like a, a mass is changing. It's the rate at which the... It's how many kilogram per second the rocket propellants are being ejected at. So if you just uh, plug in the numbers, you get the same answer. Okay, how about the water cannon thing? So let's say we have a, wa a water jet with a cross-sectional area of 2.5 cm square. And let's say the density of water is 1000 kg uh, per meter cube. The water jet has a speed of 80 meter per second. When it hits a wall, Let's say the, wa the water just loses all its uh, horizontal momentum, trickles vertically down the wall. It lost momentum, right? So Newton's second law says that if you are losing momentum, you must be experiencing a force. So what is the force exerted by the wall on the water to destroy all its momentum? Uh, for that, we must first figure out how much water hits the wall per unit time. So since it's moving at 80 meter per second, Let's consider the length of 80 meters. So the water jet is moving at 80 meters per second, yeah? So if I'm the water here, would I arrive at the wall within one second? Yes, right? Here also, right? Here also, right? Even if I'm here, I'll still be able to arrive here within one second. So the last bit of water that arrived just in time will be here, right? That's 80 meters away from the wall. So that means, uh, this cylindrical volume represents the volume of water that hits the wall per second. So if I take 2.5 times 80 meter per second, what I get is the volume per second hitting the wall. So if I take the volume per second and multiply it with the density, what I get is the kilogram per second. So every kilogram of water that hits the wall loses 80 meter per second of velocity. But there are 20 kilograms of them hitting the wall every second. So look at the calculation here. When I take 20 multiply with 80, what I get is the force exerted by the wall on the water to destroy all this momentum. Right? That's the rate at which momentum is being destroyed here. So again, technically, 
This is the force exerted by the wall on the water jet. By Newton's third law, we know that the water jet is also exerting a impact force of 1.6 kN on the wall. Of course, you can use the V dm dt formula to calculate as well. So again, let me remind you, V is the change in velocity. It's not just V, uh, it's the change in velocity. And dm dt is the mass per unit time hitting the wall here. So dm dt can be written as rho a v. So if you look carefully, a times v is the volume per unit time. So multiply with the density, that's the mass per unit time. Plug in the numbers, you get the same number. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!